Hey, welcome back to the channel. So Sonoma came out a few months, so it's time to pull the 2015 MacBook Pro out and see how that runs on here using OpenCore Legacy Patcher to install it. Now I did a similar video like this a few weeks ago on uh, 2012 MacBook Pro running with Sonoma and this runs so much better, so much so that I've been using it as my primary machine uh, for the last couple of weeks while I've been testing this out. So let's get right into this. The first thing we can see is the motion wallpapers are working just fine. And if we go ahead and log in, we can see that they continue running and then come to a stop just like they showed in the video. So those motion wallpapers are working great. You can go in and change them by going into change wallpaper. And then you can select from any of these that are uh, that come with Sonoma. Some of them you have to download, like I downloaded this, uh, this Earth one, kind of like this one. So all you do is you click on it, it downloads it, and then you can apply it as your desktop background and your screensaver. All right, so next up, let's take a look at widgets because that is another new feature. So if we go to change widgets, we can drag out, you know, say the clock widget and the calendar and say we want uh, weather as well. And we can drag them out and just drop them wherever we want on the desktop, that works fine. We can go ahead and go into change again and if we want to arrange them, so we want to have these together and the weather right underneath there, we can do that. And then, uh, you know, now when we're out of, out of that mode, it's locked in there. And when we click on it, it brings up the associated application. So that works just as you would expect, works fantastic. The day-to-day -day performance, as also you might expect, is fantastic on this computer. Uh, everything launches pretty quickly. It's got a SSD in here. Now this SSD is a, you know, a little bit older, so it's not the fastest out there, but it's definitely faster than a uh, internal spinning drive. And we can use all the gestures, so we can use the uh, trackpad gestures to swipe back and forth between the full screen applications. We can come in from the right and uh, we have all our notifications over here and then we can you know, send those back. So those gestures all work really well as well. The resolution on this computer, it's fully recognized. If we go into the display settings, uh, we, I have it at 1920 by 1200. It likes to do the, the lower 1440 by 900 as the default, but I set it to the higher resolution. And this works great both with the laptop as it is and also in desktop mode. So I have a, a dock that I connect this up to and use it with those two displays next to me. And then uh, it, it works great. I can get the full resolution. Those are 1440p monitors. It does the full resolution on both displays. And this runs great as a desktop computer as well as, uh, you know, a, a laptop computer. And these are a few years old now, but they run so well and they run Sonoma on here so well that if you can get these for between, you know, I got this for 350. If you can get it between three, 350 and five, I would say that it's still a good deal even by today's standards. Um, it It's working fantastically well. Even one thing that didn't work on the 2012 MacBook Pro in Sonoma works great on here. And that is continuity camera. So let me just fire that up. I'll pick up my iPhone here. And we should get the camera in a second. So there we go, there's the iPhone camera. It's not using the internal one, just to show you. Um, but it, it's working really well. Uh, there's absolutely no problems with it. I couldn't get this to work at all with the 2012, but with the 2015, it's working well. And then we can switch back to the FaceTime camera if you want and now just hold my finger by it so you can see the difference. I mean. The FaceTime camera on this laptop is actually worse than the iPhone camera, so it's a great option to, you know, boost your uh, your fidelity for your video conferences with something that you might already have in your pocket. And since I have the iPhone out, let's go ahead and uh, I'll just show you that AirDrop works as well. So let's find a picture. So I just have this picture of William Shatner and, and Leonard Nimoy, so I'll just AirDrop that over to the MacBook Pro, select it from the list, and then it airdropped right over, and we can go and open it up on here, just as we would expect, and it works just fine the other way, uh, going back from the MacBook Pro 
to the iPhone. Uh, another thing that works, but you know what? I'm going to save this till the end because there's something else that works, but you have to jump through a few hoops to get it to work. Um, so I want to talk about some of the things that don't work now, and those are going to be anything that uses the Apple Silicon chip. And that's not a limitation of using open core legacy patcher on this computer. It's a limitation of the Intel processor. There's some aspects or some features of Mac OS that Apple has only made available to silicon chips. And that's kind of like those camera effects where the camera kind of follows you around and you can change the backgrounds on the fly and stuff. That kind of stuff is only available on those uh, M1 processors. So anything that works on an Intel processor works on this computer. Again, there are some caveats there, but anything obviously that needs an Apple Silicon isn't gonna work because it's an it's a Intel Mac. Now, as far as longevity, you, are still gonna be able to use this for a few more years. They are gonna phase out Mac OS on Intel Macs, of course, um, as soon as everything is switched over to Apple Silicon, there's no more new Intel Macs coming out. So, you know, it's only gonna be a matter of time here before even with Open Core Legacy Patch where we won't be able to install the newest Mac OS on Intel Macs. But that being said, even at that point, you're still gonna be okay for a couple of years because the software manufacturers are gonna still support those older operating systems for at least two years after they're no longer supported. So if you got one of these now, I wouldn't spend over 500. I really wouldn't spend maybe over 400. If you can get it for 350 like I did, it's a no brainer. 500 is the max I would spend. And I think it's still a good deal at that price point. Now I mentioned there was another feature that works on this, but there's some hoops you have to jump through and that is universal control and sidecar with an iPad. So I'm gonna bring this in here and just uh, show you that it does work. So if we go and we just drag our mouse over to the right hand side here, we can see that little border pop up. And then now we can use the trackpad on the iPad and control it with that. And we can go back and you know control our Mac again. Uh, the the keys work too, so you know we can view all our applications and all that kind of stuff. So all that stuff works works fine. So another thing we can use is Sidecar. Uh, if we go to Displays, we can go and select it from this list. So we'll have our iPad in there, and then what we can do is just select it and change it from linked keyboard and mouse to extend or mirrored display. So we're gonna do that and give it a second. Move it over to the side here. Just gonna change the arrangement since it's on the right side of my screen. And we're done. Now this works, but you'll see in just a second, hopefully this will show up on the video. It's a little bit uh, kind of kludgy. So if we drag this over, it works, but I, I don't know if you can see the pixelation. Let me see if I can uh, increase the brightness. So as we're moving it around, there's a lot of pixelation. So it does work, uh, but it doesn't work great. And I've had this experience with Sidecar on every unsupported Mac using uh, Open Core Legacy Patcher. So um, I don't really see this all that useful. I guess in a pinch it would be, but um, even though you can get this to work, it's not as smooth as it is on a native Mac. Now I mentioned you have to jump through some hoops to make that universal control and sidecar work on this 2015 MacBook Pro. That's because this computer and a few others have been blacklisted from universal control. The hardware is absolutely capable of it for, for whatever reason, Apple has blacklisted it. So in Open Core Legacy Patcher, you have to go in and kind of uh, spoof it and tell it that you're using a different version of the OS than you're actually using. So. If we go into applications and make sure you have the, the latest open core patcher for this, we're going to open up open core patcher and then we're going to go into settings and then we go into SM BIOS. Now we want to set the SM BIOS uh, spoof level to moderate and then we are going to pick the MacBook Pro 15 comma 2 and then we're gonna go back, return. We're gonna build the build and install OpenCore and install it to the internal disk. 
Now that's going to tell it that it's a, a different version of Mac OS. Everything still works, but it also enables those sidecar features. Now, if you don't do that, it's totally fine. You just won't be able to use that universal control feature and everything else still works great without that. So if you're a little bit nervous about doing this, it's not a requirement, but it is if you want to use those features. So another little hiccup I wanted to let you know about, I don't think it's an issue anymore because I think they fixed it in the latest version of the OpenCore Legacy Patcher. But just something to look out for is when I first installed this and restarted, I got a black screen and I had to jump through a bunch of hoops to get back to the OS again so that I could fix that. Now, long story short, the reason for that is that that version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher didn't have the drivers for the Wi-Fi in there. So I had to use an Ethernet dongle and hardwire the computer and then uh, do the install because there was some critical patches that needed to be downloaded by OpenCore that it could not download because uh, it didn't have the Wi-Fi drivers and couldn't get online. Once I did it over the ethernet, it was able to download those files, install everything, and everything was fine. Now, like I said, I think they fixed this in the later versions of OpenCore Legacy Patcher. So if you're gonna install Sonoma on here or do an update of the version of Sonoma you have on here, make sure that you get that latest version so that you don't run into that issue. If you have any questions or comments on anything I talked about in this video, let me know. If there's something that I forgot about, let me know that too. I'm happy to either answer questions or do another little video on things I might have skipped over. If you like this video and the content I do and want to help support the channel, I have a Buy Me Coffee uh, link down below. Any little bit that you could donate would really help me keep these videos going. But even if you don't, I really appreciate you stopping by, watching the video, commenting, and uh, hitting that thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next video.